Coming up next on City Scene, Cowboy Days in Odomtosh returns to Casa Grande. Bull riding, parades, barrel racing, and more. We'll take a look at what you have to look forward to at this year's event. It all starts now on City Scene. Welcome to another edition of City Scene. I'm your host, Mary Allen. It's almost time for one of our community's signature events, Cowboy Days in Odomtosh. Here to tell us more about the week-long festivities are event organizers, Larry Raines and Dick Powell. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Happy so tell here. us what we're expecting this year. Another uh, fun nine days. Uh, nine days of uh, rodeo and roping and carnivals and parades. And uh, you know, it's just gonna be another exciting year. So tell us about the schedule of events. When does it kick off? So Mary, uh, we, we always start the event the weekend of the President's Day um, weekend. And so this year it's going to be kicking off on the 17th of February and it will run through that nine days through the 25th of February. We look forward to it. I know the community every year. What are we looking forward to? Anything different this year? Well, we're going to have pretty much the same structure of events as we've had the last several years. We are moving a few of the events to different dates to better, to better uh, uh, suit the contestants um, and really just the, the flow of the, the program. But uh, on, on uh, Monday, we'll have uh, a national ro roping uh, that's produced by Ty Yost. He traditionally has come to the event but has uh, held that roping on Thursday. Um, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll have the Mike Servi Jr. Memorial Roping, again, um, here in Casa Grande, where you'll see some of your, uh, the best ropers in the nation. Uh, many of the uh, individuals that are out here in Casa Grande are the same uh, ropers that rope in Las Vegas in the National Rodeo Finals, and, and uh, so it's always quite uh, an event. On Thursday, we're moving our, our Maple Leaf Classic from Monday to Thursday this year. Uh, we've got a, 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 a new manager, uh, mm -hmm. assisting us with that. Um, he's, he's actually a Canadian. It is a tribute to the, to the Canadians that come to, to Casa Grande and to Pinal County in Arizona and, and, and uh, bring their, uh, their, their, their resources, their money to, to our areas. And, and um, so uh, we've got a new producer that's out of Canada that's going to be helping us uh, and assisting us with that rodeo. Friday we'll have a, an exceptional rodeo which is specifically geared towards uh, the elementary school, middle school students and then uh, we'll end as we traditionally have with our ranch rodeo uh, the, the last weekend. Now you kick it off with the parade, correct? We, we do start the event um, uh, the weekend with a parade, uh, a similar route as we've had the last several years, uh, starting at Brown onto Florence Boulevard, down to Florence Street, ending in the downtown. Um, we've, we've had good uh, success of bringing that parade back uh, this has been a community event for over 50 years, and the parade, the Odom Tosh Parade, has been a parade that has been well known in our community. And when the event left our community for a couple of years, we lost some of the uh, participation, and, and we're hoping to continue to bring that back. Last year, we had roughly 50 entries, and we're on track to exceed that this year. And so, uh, we're expecting another good parade. So, Dick, tell us the history of Odom Tosh. Well, as Larry mentioned, Odomtosh has been around a long time, and it uh, was basically a community effort. It wasn't done by the city or the Chamber of Commerce. It was members of the community that uh, felt like we weren't appreciative enough of our Native American neighbors. And uh, so they put on the first one was basically a, a one-day rodeo and a, and a barbecue. And it, it just grew from there as the years went by, and uh, it it, uh, it is an interesting thing that uh, Casa Grande, the event we put on is nonprofit, and it really highlights our culture and our heritage with what we're doing. In fact, the Heritage Grant is what helped build some of the rodeo grounds that's there today. 
the different communities have been very nice to Casa Grande with helping with, uh, I, I know Larry was able to, uh, to uh, work with the Op Chin to get a $90,000 grant to help put a shade over the bleachers and we hope to have that finished for next year, Larry, when, Absolutely. We, when we have our performance. So can you expand a little more on the, the schedule of events? Yes, Mary. We uh, obviously we have our anchors throughout the week, and uh, but we also have a lot of other activities that are going on on both weekends. Um, we ultimately have uh, the carnival that it's the Fraser Show Carnival that is, brings a nice uh, set of rides to Casa Grande, and they will be spinning uh, pretty much the entire event. They do they go they do go dark on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, in the middle of the week, but will be open uh, to the community on both uh, weekends. Uh, the weekend of the Odom Tosh Rodeo, we actually have uh, our annual softball tournament, which has become very, uh, 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 very well attended uh, by participants as well. And last year, in the rain, as Mr. Powell's pointed out, we had over 20 teams participating. It's both men and women, um, and uh, there's a variety of teams that will participate there. And then on Sunday, it's, we, we're bringing back the TOCA tournament, and that's, uh, that is uh, certainly something that our uh, Native American neighbors have become very, uh, very uh, comfortable with coming out and playing here at our, at our, our baseball fields. And, and just, it's a tradition of the Native Americans, and they, uh, they thoroughly enjoy it, and we like making that an opportunity for them. Mr. Powell, okay. did you want to add some more? As you say, on Monday you have the uh, the roping, and it's it'll be a really good roping. There's a lot of people in it. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, as, as you mentioned, is is uh, George's. He's raised about a half a million dollars in his ropings for the uh, the Cowboy uh, Crisis Fund, which helps contestants and, and different ones that get hurt, and some of them seriously. To be able to, to pay their bills and, and to get well and get going again, and then the uh, the Canadian roping on Thursday is interesting, and, and uh, that started we call it the Maple Leaf Classic because there's so many people that come down from Canada. We did this to say thank you to them, and uh, Friday, as you mentioned, is is, uh, is is really a benevolent thing that's done by CAC Rodeo Team to. Per uh, put on that rodeo for special kids and uh, it's big for them and the school kids come to watch on on the ranch rodeo uh, on that Saturday morning there's going to be a barrel race it'll be a 4D, uh, 4D barrel race and there if I remember right they open the books at 9 uh, you can enter and they have time only that they can run just to see how their horse is doing. Mm -hmm. But at noon then, they're gonna start the, the 4D and all the entries have to be in by then. Right. And then the ranch rodeo is, uh, is my favorite. The work they do is, is uh, they're going back to work on Monday. They're not stars going around to different ropings or rodeos. But, and there's becoming more uh, ranch rodeos all the time because it's fun to watch genuine cowboys work. And, and they make it look so easy on some of these there's uh, four team events, and then there's a uh, wild horse race. So a community-wide event like this takes a lot of collaboration. Who do you partner with? So Mary, Each other. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Dick, and I, Dick and I are doing a lot of work right now. Um, as, as, as in the past, uh, the West Pinal County uh, Mounted Sheriff's Posse is the nonprofit organization that actually hosts the event. But it, it certainly could not be done without a lot of help from, uh, from both the, the governments in the city of Casa Grande, yes. but as well as uh, many of our, our neighboring uh, Native American communities, as well as our local businesses. Uh, we have several sponsors that have been uh, alongside of us since day one. Uh, this year we have two premier sponsors, uh, Crescent Crown, that has been uh, a big help to the, to the event and, and, and to the organization. Uh, for the last several years and Henry Brown will be back for their third year in a row as the premier sponsor and and, uh, and then we have a variety of others and I, I mean it, 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 would, it would take me minutes to go down the entire list of everybody that participates. There it is for a second. Uh, yeah. Henry Brown's new manager here is, is an ex-world champion bull rider, professional. So he fits right on in. Yeah, yes. fits right in. So he'll have fun this year. Oh yes, he will. Yes. <laughs> uh, so so ultimately, it is a community event. It takes a lot of volunteers to pull off uh, not only one one rodeo, but we've got you know two rodeos and several ropings in the middle. So so uh, again, 
you know, from, from the city's perspective, from, from my perspective, uh, what we're really looking for as, as an event committee is to really bring back uh, the enthusiasm to this event, to, to the way it was several years ago and, and getting that community support behind it and the, the participation. And so while you may not be a sponsor for the event, your business isn't a sponsor, that doesn't mean that you can't come down to the, to the rodeos and come in and, and uh, buy a ticket to come in and watch the various cowboys and cowgirls participate throughout the course of the nine days. And, and uh, I know we're going to talk a little bit more about, about the fees for each individual event here uh, shortly, but uh, very affordable and very, very much a family, um, a family event, and we're looking forward to the community participating. Larry, why don't you share where the uh, proceeds go from the different events because it is focused on nonprofit. Yes, yeah. the one of the primary goals of of the uh, committee as well as the posse over the years is, in, in that nonprofit profit status is to ultimately be able to assist young adults with their future endeavors. And so we have um, for well since we've taken back over the event been um, very uh, forthcoming with by the fact that we've got scholarships and we have uh, awarded individual scholarships to our three Native Ameri American communities uh, ar around us in Gila River, Ak Chen, and uh, Tohono O'odham. And we also have worked very closely with the CAC College uh, for, for their rodeo, um, for their rodeo group and, and ultimately uh, awarding scholarships. And in, in the time that uh, we've taken back over, We've we've given in excess of uh, twelve thousand uh, dollars the last several years just uh, putting that back in and again it's it's it really is exciting and Mr. Powell mm -hmm. and I both have had yeah. an opportunity to to present those checks to these to Very these rewarding. Uh, absolutely to these uh, community members to these young adults that are going on to uh, to pursue a higher education or become in the skilled trades and uh, it's just a way of giving back to again to to our neighbor our, our neighboring communities. And the tribes actually give you the names of the yeah they it, on the on the Odom yeah, yeah yeah on the on the Odom Tosh um, on the Odom Tosh side uh, of the proceeds yes we we typically work with the Department of Education of each of those um, nations and they will give us a rewarding student uh, recipient's name each year and we'll go out and introduce ourselves and and mm -hmm. learn a little bit about them and and so so uh, they're doing uh, they're making the selection and we're simply uh, providing the check. So there's admission costs in some of these events. Can you tell us about those? Yes, Mary. So uh, first and foremost, um, uh, there are several free events, and so the the ropings that we're having during the during the week Monday um, Monday's ropings, Tuesday's ropings, and Thursday's ropings are all free admission. If you want to come watch a Canadian or or you know or the Canadian ropers and or the uh, um, just the, what I would consider to be the team ropers that follow some of these producers, the, you can come in for free. Uh, for the Odom Tosh All Indian Rodeo, there is a fee of $15 per person, 12 and under are free. Uh, for the Serbi event, the same price, $15 uh, for adults. And uh, for the Ranch Rodeo, it's $10 for adults and 12 and under are free. So it really makes it affordable for families. It's, it's a very affordable weekend. Uh, we're going to have vendors there as we have uh, we're, the concessions will be open, and so it, so really, it's a, it's an opportunity for for uh, our our residents to come out, bring your family, bring your kids, and and get in uh, very affordably and watch, you know, a couple hours worth of performance of, of cowboys uh, on on all side of, on both sides of the week. And you mentioned everything's rain or shine. Yep, everything's rain or shine. I know that some of the spectators uh, like like watching the the cowboys in the rain, um, so. Our preference is that it's that it's about 70 degrees. Most events end at five, correct? Uh, we try to wrap up most of our events by five o'clock. Um, the the rodeos on both weekends will the gates will be opening at noon with the first performance, which is a wild horse race, yeah. with, at one o'clock. And so um, so we'll start them at one, and it's usually a two two and a half hour performance. And so in all like, likeliness, we're, we're done by 3.30 or 4 with yeah. the performances. But again, we've got the vendors, we're going to have concessions. People can certainly stay around and enjoy around. that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add? Mary, I, uh, from my perspective, I want to talk a little bit about the venue, and then I want to talk about our, um, our relationship with our, our Native American communities. 
uh, for those individuals that have been familiar with the community, you've seen the improvements that have been made at these rodeo grounds, and really it's a partnership, again, with the Posse and the city really working on uh, building that complex in order to maintain that heritage and that lifestyle. And, and But we couldn't do it without our, our Native American communities, and in fact, uh, they've been very, very gracious and very, very participatory with us. Uh, we've reported this before, the Gila River Indian community gave a grant of $75,000 to build the pavilion, which is, a, which is a cover right outside of the bleachers. And uh, after, uh, after uh, some level of dialogue, we've learned this year uh, through the Prop 202 grants that the Ak Chin is going to, is going to be as gracious this year and are, is bringing uh, some funds, roughly $90,000, to assist uh, the, the, the various organizations in the city and building um, and, and covering the, the bleachers, the, the seated area there. So um, as Mr. Palace pointed out previously, uh, we are looking forward to next year when the spectators have that, have that cover from, from the weather. Yeah. But, but again, it could not happen without uh, the gracious participation uh, by our neighboring communities. Absolutely. Community support does wonders, and I know people want things to do and people to come to Cass Grand and put on different things and and we we uh, as a community need to try to support whatever it is whatever organization or whatever and, and uh, it uh, it strengthens that event and it becomes uh, grows roots and and stays here and happens every year and we're really thankful that is what has happened to the event we put on. Cowboy Days in Odentosh begins Saturday, February 17th and runs until Sunday, February 25th at the Ed Hooper Rodeo Park, located at 2525 North Pinnell Avenue. The parade will be held on Saturday, February 17th in downtown Casa Grande. For a complete schedule of events, visit CasagrandeCowboyDays.com or look for a printed schedule in the Dispatch and City Beat newsletter. That wraps up another edition of City Scene. If you have an idea for a City Scene topic, please let us know. Email us at PIO at CasagrandeAZ.gov or give us a call at 520-421-8627. And don't forget to follow us on social media.